So it's Sunday the 2nd of June and what's it all about? We're at Wayne Fleet, yes, right up there in the northeast. It's the national qualifier that's building the press as being an exciting meeting. Well, I think that's quite an understatement. Exciting? It's important. A one-off meeting that means entry into the British Masters. Now that's a statement that so many riders have been carrying in their head over the last three or four weeks. If they do well here today, then they are in the British Masters. The first round of the Masters is back end of the month, that's the 30th of June, and that's one to look forward to. So who's going to make it? A chance for the newcomers to the sport, the Tony Darts, the Gary Reynolds. Will they qualify? Will they get into the Masters? So many of the crowd that have travelled all the way up here, I'm sure, want to see that. In the sidecars, a chance for those that just missed out last year? Maybe they finished 13th, 14th, 15th? It meant they didn't automatically go through. They've got to do it all again, and they know that today is the day where they've got to have a one-off meeting that goes exactly right for them. It means that all in all, over the five rides that all the riders will have, every single race is important. It's not just about who wins the race, it's about scoring points and getting into those Masters places. At the end of the day, it all wraps up with an open final, that if you've scored enough points, you'll be there to try and win the prize money. So perhaps it's the end of the day that I've got to look forward to see a one-off race and see competitive racing in one race and a chance for the Paul Fries etc to prove that they don't really need to be here. They should be in the Masters. All in all it wraps up to being a fantastic day's racing I'm sure. The track looks superb. We look forward to see some great racing. How interesting this qualifier event could be and certainly when I use the word interesting I think of a sidecar crew that confused me to say the least. Now I've got to say that last year I've noticed from the records that, Gary, it was you that finished third at the qualifier, yes? That's right, yeah, that's right. And it was a good day too, so I hope we do the same today. But there's a difference today, because obviously this year, we move over and it's Steve, your turn to drive. Hope to do as well? Uh, yeah, pretty confident. Just uh, hope reliability keeps up. But, uh, that's the main worry today. Well, I think I would agree with that. And I've said in the interim with the uh, it video here that one of the important factors is making sure you score in all five rides, isn't it? That's right, yeah. You need to drop a few points and that's it, you're out. Uh, got to make good starts and be consistent all day. And go for the money at the end. <laughs> yeah, the added bonus of the money at the end, but I'm sure, Gary, just a quick word from you. Basically, it's getting into that Masters that's important today, isn't it? That's right, that's all that matters at the end of it. Um, the, the rest of it's just a bonus. It doesn't matter to Ooch, really, as long as we make it. And the thing this year is, instead of ruining the Masters like we did last year in the first round, and uh, leaving it all to do at the second round, we'll just we'll we'll do well at both of them this year, no problems. <laughs> well, plenty of predictions from both of them, but I think all I can say is the very best of luck to both of you. Look forward to it. There's one sidecar crew that I had to have a word with, and it's interesting to see that they're here at the qualifying event. Alan Blewett, incredible, really, that you're not actually in that lineup for the Masters automatically. Uh, well, you have good years and bad years, but I think it, we actually failed last year through mechanical breakdowns and possibly a little bit of bad luck. But um, the quality of the grass track and now, they used to be as we used to call the top six. I think we've got to own up now, it's the top 12. <laughs> yeah, I certainly agree with that. And it's uh, not going to be easy today, is it? There's a lot of good sidecars here, as you've said. And of course, it is only those few that we're looking for to add to the Masters list. Well, uh, somebody informed me that the Speedway star had actually made us favourite. If they'd seen me bike in the garage uh, one night ago, they wouldn't have made it favourite to turn up. <laughs> um, yes, you're right. Um, I've had a walk around the field and I've spoke to every sidecar driver and I've got respect for them all. There's a lot of young lads coming in, they've prepared the machines beautiful and I wish them the best of luck and I hope they're qualified. I think I ought to quantify that point a little bit Alan because I did speak to you earlier and you said that it's a change of machinery for today, isn't it, due to those mechanical problems? Um, yeah, I'm not making complaints but at the Burke's Bonanza I did find um, that part of the front of my chassis was twisting and letting go, so we've decided to strengthen that. Um, it's four years old, we're going to renew it. Um, because of my flying career, I've left the bike alone. I've got my flying out the way, I'm now going to concentrate on grass tracking, right? Um, I've had to bring the Speedway bike with no suspension, but we're going to make the best of it. We're not making excuses. Well, I don't mean it as an excuse at all, but with no suspension at the end of the day, it's hard. I wish you the very best of luck, Alan. Yeah, thank you, and uh, I wish the other drivers uh, good luck and good riding too. Thanks, Alan. One of those questions I mentioned in the introduction was whether some of our young stars that are coming through can qualify from this one-off meeting to get through into the Masters. Gary Reynolds, I'm sure that you'd love to get through to the Masters this year. 
but I'd like to get through because I'm one of the youngest to competing in the qualifier and it's just in my first year I'd really like to get in the meeting. And I think beyond all doubt there is the capabilities there isn't there? I mean you've had some fantastic meetings already this season. I've had some good results this meeting, I won four or five races, um, just been riding well but hopefully I'll be able to get in. Well indeed, I mean one thing I've been saying to a lot of the riders is that I think the name of the game today is consistency, it's going to be five consistent rides isn't it? Yeah, so the five races, you've just got to be consistent all day, make sure you don't fall off, no breakdowns, just be lucky. Well I think for all of us, we wish you the best of luck Gary, we hope that the success keeps coming, you're riding extremely well, there's no reason why you can't get through today, the very best of luck. Thanks. There are so many riders that I could have a word with this morning, but I know one crowd please that have returned to the Sport of Grass track, and I know that we love seeing, putting in good results as well, is Malcolm Simmons. Malcolm, great to see you again at the qualifier. Hopes for getting through into the Masters? Yeah, you know, I'd like to qualify. It's, it's just another achievement, isn't it? You know, no one expects me to do anything anymore, and, you know, I come to these meetings and I just go out and do what I can, and, you know, with a bit of luck, I'll get through to the next couple of rounds. Well, I think unfortunately there's people out there that do expect you to get through. There's a lot still believing you, Malcolm. So uh, I think what I've been saying to most riders is it's a matter of consistency and I think if it's that that comes into play, that could be where you score hands down this afternoon. Yeah, hopefully that's right. Uh, you know, last year I had a problem in one race and for that reason I, I didn't get through to the top 16 in the, in the second round. I got through from this round, but you know, um, you, one, one bad race and you, you really you really miss out, you know, you've got to say three thirds would do fine. Well I think I'd agree and as we look through the competition that is of course so important, I keep reminding everybody of that, but that is the important factor and then of course hopefully we'll see you in that big final at the end of the day just for a bit of fun. Well no that's not the fun then, that's the money. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm the very best of luck, let's hope we'll see you later. Always interesting things that I can talk about in the Swarter Grass track, but one rider that's gone from being a very successful solo rider to being a sidecar competitor, Duncan Toller, successful last weekend at the Sidecar Spectacular. High hopes of getting through here at the qualifier. Yeah, like we're, we're here and all we want to do is get through. We're not worried about what we win, just we want to make the final if we can, and uh, we'll be happy with that. Well, indeed, and obviously, with that win last weekend, machinery and equipment. I keep saying, as I go through the pits here this morning, that reliability is going to be a major issue and your machinery obviously in tip-top condition at the moment. Well, keeping the fingers well crossed, you know. But, yeah, we had a good meeting last week, and uh, but it's a different day and we're just going to see. I hope things keep going and hope we, hope we can make good starts again. That's, what, <laughs> that's, that's where, where luck is today, hopefully. Well, indeed, it's uh, so important in grass track racing to get those starts. Duncan, wish you the best of luck and let's hope you get through. Thanks very much. Well, I did mention a moment ago there's a lot of crews that I could have a word with, but I think looking back to the history books, I've got to say one crew I had to have a word with. A lot of people here, I'm sure, thinking that they're going to get through. John Hiscock, I'm going to look back to 94, it was eighth in finishing position. Missed out on getting through automatic crew qualification, so you've got to do it the hard way. Yeah, you're right, we have. Um, we've come up here to do one thing win, nothing else, just win. Now I've been saying as I've gone around the pits today that the important thing is qualifying but you put a different angle on it, you want to go through confidently. I want to go through as a winner to upset all the ones who are still in it now. That's our aim. <laughs> well a determined aim and Matt I've got to ask a quick question really, I know that you didn't ride last Monday afternoon because I heard from the pits that there was an injury, everything's okay now is it? Yeah it's still a bit stiff but should be alright. <laughs> a very confident should be alright, I'm not going to get any through that. But obviously things are well at the moment. Yeah, not going too bad. Everything's sorted for today, so should do well. Excellent. John, Matt, I wish you the best of luck. Qualifying to me is important, but obviously winning to you is important. That's it, we'll come here to win. I talked about long distance travel. Well, you can't get much further than this. Anthony Bulgar, riding number two this afternoon. On his maximum GR, all the way from the island of Guernsey. That was a heck of a journey to get here. And I know that... Uh, Last weekend he rode down at the Wimborne and picked up the honours on the bank holiday Monday. Number five is Philip Knowles, he travelled across here from Brantford. John Pepper, the breeze has come there, the ride I'm sure has got a lot of support here this afternoon, Raymond Morton up from London. John Jeffrey, the only 22 years out of school boys, number 14. Number 22 is Aaron Matthews, all the way up from Cornwall. Number 26, Tony Hart, up from Kent. Malcolm Simmons going past me, number 30, also number 77, John Underwood. I'm sure you can pick them all out as they come round past you yourselves. 
You'll see the very noses of the different competitors as they come round past you, and I'm not being warned to anybody at all there. Mark Jones from the 10th, also number 26, going past me. Number 54, it's good to see that uh, our performance in practice, Steve Holding has got the machinery sorted out. I think it was just a, a chain that had come loose. Number 169, James Porterway comes past me. There's another one up from the Sony. South of the UK. Been thinking number 844, he's come through from reserve position to being a competitor this afternoon. He was down as first reserve, but we know due to the fact that there's no Paul Fudge number 49, then uh, his kingpin is in the right here, but unfortunately missed out on the automatic qualification from the Masters. So he's another one that's going to do it all again. so many interesting facts that you can pick up from the qualifier results over the years. Going back to 1994, Jason Handley finished 14th, and that was in a reserve position from the qualifier. All the way up from Cornwall, I can see coming around is outfit number 60, Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley. Oh, we'll see now, it's going to be made a lot easier, isn't it?
the pump for a long way down the field. He's got to work his way through the middle of that pack, and you can see the lead already. That Scott Nichols has got on the rest of the field. Paul Fry has done the work, though. He's got himself through the field. He's up in second place. Terry Reed is up there in third place.
has made the start as they go round that first bend. It is indeed Roger that's got to the front as they go down that back straight, being closed in by the rest of the field. Off this first turn they come once again.
to the start on the inside. I can see Alan and John Blewett have made a terrific start as they go into that first pin. Craig Cheatham is the outfit trying to go round the outside into that first pin. Locks it up, tries to cut back underneath the exit of the bin. Place going on between Great Cheatham and Mark Cyrus as they battle it out going up that back straight. But Alan and John Blewett, in the very determined form this morning, said that they wanted to do well this afternoon.
made the best of that start. It looks as if with a good start for Chris Terrell, but he's hit problems early on. His Pete Goodwin has got to the front as they get to that first turn. He's gone a little bit wide, but he's still got the lead. They've hit problems, but the front two are certainly pulling away from them. Pete Goodwin still leading just from Steve Wright, and Steve gets very, very close. Right the front of the field is Steve and Gary Wright look very, very quick on the exit of the bend. Certainly Pete Goodwin has got that lead, but Steve Wright right there with him. Watch how he powers out of the top of this bend. It's the exit of the bend that they seem to be that much quicker. Back straight they go and into this top bend. Now it's a question of holding on to it, not allowing Pete Goodwin to come back here and Pete's put his sideways. But all sorts of problems for Pete Goodwin as they come to the checkered flag. Steve and Gary Wright first take the win. Pete Goodwin in second place. Where's Fred Rizzi? Getting that third spot. But a great recovery from Pete Goodwin there. I saw he completely locked it up. Managed to keep the motor going. Let's hope he gets credited with that second place. One uh, win, a very determined win for outfit number 10, Steve and Gary Wright. In second place, the leader for so long, number 111, Pete Goodwin and Carl Pugh. In third place, number 43, Roy Spreadbury and Steve Kensington. Fourth place, number 7, Ray Picard and Ian Richardson. And in fifth place, number 21, Penny Hook and Eddie Elvis. No six finisher there, the winning time, 116.97. It looked at places faster, but Reg Blackboard, a terrific ride, no giving up when he'd lost that first place, he wanted it back. First leg ride 
in sixth place, number 86, Andy Rimmer, and seventh place, number four. Eighth place going to number 122, and the winning time, 122.63. Tony Dyer 
now back in fourth place and really watch what's going on ahead of him. He's got a morning gap now. Into these second heats for all the solos, a win for number six. That's his second ride and his second win, Scott Nichols. In second place, number 97, Justin Elkins. Two rides and two second places. In third place, number 76, that's Tony Dart. In fourth place, number 711, Darren Pugh. In fifth place, number 84, Gary Phelps. And in sixth place, number 7, Rob Vincent. In seventh place, number 77. Eighth place, number 19. Ninth place, 158. And the winning time, 120.81. 120.81. Alan and John Blue have got away. John Hiscock 
going after him. He knows that both of them have had a race win first time out. Alain Jean Blouet going a little bit wide. John Hiscott looks much, much tighter. Doing that first time out as well. So three outfits going very, very quickly indeed. Alain and John Blouet still with the lead. John Hiscock and Matt Sleep in second, looking for a way through. Pete Goodwin in third place, looking to see if any mistakes.